do you take away from today's uh, draw? First game, of, first game of the year, first game for you as a Dynamo player. What do you take away? Uh, obviously, you never want to start out the way we did. I don't think we started great, and I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, ultimately, though, I'm very happy with the response. I think that you know after the first 10 minutes, it was a little bit unsettling, but um, we, we worked our way into the game and played arguably the best 30 minutes we had played all preseason and everything like that, and then carried our momentum into the second half where you know, I think both teams got tired legs. It's uh, first game of the year. I don't know if everyone's completely 90 minutes mid-season form fit. So um, obviously we have to watch the film and go back and check everything. But I think there's moments that we can work towards because we showed some good things. But also there's some, some things that we also have to work on and, and go forward with. Obviously you never want to give up the goal as a defender. But um, uh, those things happen. And personally, it was fun. What an atmosphere. What a great game. Um, fans brought it, uh, both teams. and. Uh, it was great. Um, hopefully the weather stays this way for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Zarek, uh, you guys coming into the game, a challenge like Pavone, Chicharito, how do you, how do you think you guys did um, against them today uh, in the game? The tough part um, about playing such talented players is they just need one moment, as you can see. I think we outshot them. We had more, probably more possession. Uh, a lot of the stats probably went in our favor, but with this league, the margins are so small. Um, so, you know, one semi counterattack. I think we probably even had even numbers if I'm not mistaken. I have to double check the film, but all you need is you know to give these guys a half a you know half a step and look look what happens. The ball gets put in the upper corner. So uh, it's difficult. Obviously, I think we maybe could have put the fire out, but um, for the length of the game, I think we held them a little bit under wraps. But we just need to be conscious of the fact that these guys can soar at any moment. I mean, obviously Chicharito has done it for some decent clubs in his career, and obviously Pavone coming in showing he did it all last year, and Katai is a good player as well. So. Um, we have to be aware, you know, for 90 minutes straight or else we'll get punished. Can you talk to us through your assist on the go, what you see? Um, I think uh, to start, uh, me and Morrow, I think, developed a pretty decent connection for the first, uh, my first probably four weeks here. Um, I found him on one pass that I think I chopped in there that I wasn't too happy. Another one he laid off to Boney and Boney had a good chance and um, he just makes great movement. and. Um, you know, he's one of these guys where if you give him the ball, you don't give him too many chances or else he'll put it in the net. And uh, I knew that the one I played that I chopped in, if I had played it better, he's probably going to score. And look what happened. Credit to him for his movement. Um, I think it was off a, a corner kick, if I'm not mistaken, or, you know, the ball had come in and circled around. So cre credit to him, but also credit to the guys for, you know, being in good spots as well because, you know, I don't think two people just make a goal. Steph said in the conference room that, you know, you're one of the guys that he wanted to be on this team because of your versatility on the back, but also what you bring. It's only one game, but you feel like you paid back Tab, you know, because he, you know, brought you into this. He wanted you to be on this team. Well, coming from someone like Tab, who obviously has an incredible resume, uh, that's, it's very kind words, but um, it's one game. And I look at it like that, and I think our whole team does. Um, so personally, you know, I need to go out there and prove it every single day in training and stuff like that because, you know, if a team gives up an asset like Joe, their starting goalie, whatever it might be, to bring you in, you have to repay that. And I have to, and I owe that to the staff, to the organization, to the fans, and to my family to do that every single day. And uh, today, today was okay, I thought. Um, you know, there's a few moments I think I could have been a little bit sharper. But ultimately, listen, if I go out there and have a stinker next week, who's going to talk about this? You know? No, seriously. So soccer and professional sports, people have such small memories. So I can get an assist this week and miss a clearance next week, and guess what? Then I'm sitting here and you're saying, well, what happened in that moment? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, happy to be a part of this team and happy to, to be on the field trying to contribute as much as possible. And, you know, credit to the staff as a whole for giving me the belief to go out there and just uh, play my game and not think too much about it. Has Steph told you specifically where he wants you to play or has he told you, I'll, I'll use you wherever I need you? <laughs> um, I think typically he's given guys in general ideas about how we want to play as a team. And then, listen, you know, whether I play left, right, or middle in preseason, I've played all three. Uh, the ideas are pretty much the same, and it's one of those things where um, I think Tab enjoyed a lot of freedom as a player. I think if you watch him play, everyone saw that. So he knows how Im like imperative that is to players. So he'll let you go out there and express yourself, and ultimately, you know, try to give you some guidelines and things like that. But you know, the quicker you can work in relationships with the team and express yourself, uh, hopefully, you know, we get three points next time. But I think there's a lot to build on here personally and with the team in general take about the chemistry of the defensive back line in, in general um, you know with a new goalkeeper you know and a new uh, and, and you coming in as well uh, into the team how has that uh, chemistry pr progressed since preseason uh, it's getting there obviously um, you know I'm the new guy and so is Marco so 
we have to kind of get used to working with Kiki a little bit. Um, I didn't get a chance to play with him a crazy amount in preseason, but um, you know, we have a very good communication, a very good relationship off the field. So those things will come. And you know, I'm just excited to be a part of this team. There's a lot of really good players. And as a defense, we know that you know, if we keep our team in the game as long as possible, we'll probably create some decent chances. Um, so I think you know, we have to look at, you know, be introspective in that sense and say, you know what, we want to give our, our team the best chance possible. And with guys like Minotis and Christian coming off the bench, you got Tommy and Nico, and obviously we have some decent players uh, who didn't dress up tonight. So um, you know, if we can give those guys uh, 90 minutes, they'll probably find a goal or two. And it's just a matter of us to put fires out and to try to work on that chemistry and the communication uh, you know, from here going forward next match is in a way it's on the road uh, one of the biggest uh, things about this team of the past couple of uh, seasons has been the huge disparity uh, between home matches and away matches uh, how has the team uh, l looked at this and uh, to improve it now, now on their first road game yeah obviously um, I'm a new guy so I don't necessarily know exactly home form away form tactics things like that um, but typically you know, throughout my time in the MLS, I've realized that uh, the best way to play on the road is to just be united in your belief and your idea. And typically, you have to start off well. A lot of teams come out and press you and put you under it, you know, for the first 10, 15 minutes, especially in Kansas City. We all know that. So I think that, you know, going into games and having the right mentality to start the games is important. And a lot of that comes from guys who've been around the block a little bit, some of the older dudes and myself, uh, to try to get the guys going and, and to, to weather that potential or well, the in impending storm because we all know it's going to happen. And then once that happens, settle. Um, I'm not a huge proponent of worrying too much about the other team. What are their tactics? Who are they playing? Uh, how do they score their goals? I'm a, you know, a big believer in the fact that we need to be aware of the other team, but we need to focus on ourselves. Because when this team plays the level we can play at, we're going to be a pretty damn good team. Obviously, we have to go out there and execute. But I think that if we are cognizant of the other team and focus on ourselves, I think you know, we'll give some teams some problems. So coming into this, the system, new coach, new team, new teammates. Over the four-week preseason, does it finally feel good to play a game in the regular season? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, it's nice to go out and kick people for real and <laughs> hear the fans. And, you know, walking out there gives you goosebumps when you, um, you know, come out for that first game. And obviously everyone's up for it. And I, and I think that overall we showed the fans that this is going to be a fun season to, to be at here at BBVA. So um, hopefully going forward we continue to get some incredible support because uh, I think we're going to be a, a team that turns a few heads this year. Obviously, it's one game. We understand that. But um, you know, we have a lot of self-belief. And ultimately, I don't necessarily care if the media hypes us up or whatever or not. We, ha we know that we can achieve some good things. And we have to just take it game by game and uh, training by training. You keep mentioning you're the new guy. I am the new guy. You've played on a lot of really good teams, though. <laughs> How do you bring in that experience of being on really, really good teams into this team who, for lack of a better phrase, have not been very good the last couple of years? Oh, if you talk to Portland, uh, I think when they put him out of the playoffs when I was there, uh, they're still a little bitter about that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm 28. Um, the soccer world is, is getting a little bit old. But I think ultimately I'm a loud guy. Uh, the more you guys will know me on and off the field, uh, which is why my voice is already kind of hoarse because you're trying to talk and organize. But I think it's just having good quality conversations because there's good players here and it's just, you know, sometimes challenging players and their beliefs and in terms of the way they view the system. And ultimately when you work together, um, you know, in tough moments, I think that good things will come of that. So obviously I'm still getting somewhat used to players. It's been four weeks. Um, but ultimately when you can, you know, draw from those experiences that I played in the MLS Cup and some of the, you know, incredible players like Alessandro Nesta and a lot of the MLS veterans and Jimmy Conrads and these guys that I've played with, um, you know, hopefully I can use some of those those lessons and things like that and work with my teammates to find the best possible outcome to put our team and put our, you know, the best foot forward for us.